broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo. And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Aloha and welcome to a special edition of Hikino, coming to you from Waikia Intermediate School in Hilo on the island of Hawaii. This episode is part of a series of shows focusing on Hawaiian values. The Hawaiian value for this episode is Ike Pono, to know what is right. For example, a building on our campus is a constant reminder that remembering significant events is the right thing to do. Our school was built in 1961. After the 1960 tsunami destroyed Waikia Kai Intermediate School and much of the bayfront area of Hilo. The old Bandum is the only building that survived the tsunami and was relocated to our campus. It reminds us of how vulnerable we are to natural disasters and that the right thing to do is be prepared for whatever comes our way. Our first story of Ike Pono comes from students at Maui Waina Intermediate School. It's about a young restaurant owner with a checkered past who finally decided to do the right thing and contribute to the health of his community. Christopher Malik Cousins is a local entrepreneur who owns three successful businesses on Maui. His most recent being Pharmacy House Bar in Wailuku, which specializes in organic, alkaline, locally sourced vegetarian dishes. But if you had met him as a teen, this is not where you would have predicted he'd be. I was a troubled youth. I was um, fight all the time, drink all the time, drive without a license, don't go to court. For 39 arrests on the county of Maui. It got so bad that he was even living on the street. Didn't have money for regular food all the time. So I would eat at St. Teresa's Church in Kihei for about nine months, kind people, and so I think that had something to do with the way I, I am now. He opened local boy shave ice in Kihei and eventually another shop in Lahaina, but he still wasn't satisfied with himself. Malik realized he had to go back to his roots to really make a difference. My mother, her name's Tutu Shama, and she lives on the Big Island, and she's um, been a vegetarian and for as long as I can remember. She raised me eating tofu and uh, nutritional yeast. Then I went away from it as I moved away from home because I was a rebellious kid who wanted to eat whatever I wanted and whatever I thought was good. But after having his own children, he realized that his mother was right and he needed to start selling foods that nourished the body and not just his pocketbook. And I also wanted to do healthy food so that um, my children would have healthy snacks as opposed to eating ice cream every day. Also, I think I was, you know, a boy seeking his mother's approval because even though I had two shops, she would tell me, but, but son, you're still serving that, that food to people, why? And the food she was referring to was the sweet treats he sold at his two local boys' locations. So, Malik decided to make his mother proud and make a change to his menu. That is how the Pharmacy Health Bar was born. Did you, you go to the pharmacy to get well or to get better, so you would come here to get well or to get better only through eating as opposed to medicine. Malik's mission extends beyond just having healthy food on the table. He also tries to give people a chance to work that might have a hard time getting a, a job other way, other places. His efforts to help the community go beyond his hiring practices. After he opened, he set up a paid forward board where customers can donate an extra $3 when paying for the meal and sponsor someone else's, which benefits everyone involved. And this gives an opportunity for people to help others easily. Now I'm giving food away and, and I feel 
good about that because I've gone to somebody that was not doing Maui any good to someone who's who's making it better. And I'm, I have almost that many employees as I did arrests. And that is quite a record to have. This is Christine Alonzo from Maui Waina Intermediate School for Ikino. Our next story of Ike Pono shows that sometimes you discover what is right after realizing that living the wrong way just isn't working for you. Here, students from YNI Intermediate School in West Oahu introduce us to a school bully who decided she needed to change her life path in order to reach her dreams. I, I really didn't go to school. I, I gave a lot of attitude and I was rude to all my teachers. And I fought a lot. Not really fight, but I used to bully people. From a young age, Sosafina Matatia was on the road to making poor choices. I started cruising with the wrong people, and they just influenced me to do a lot of bad stuff. Bad influences bring bad results. Like most kids her age, Sose had problems, but she didn't know how to deal with them, so she acted out. She would scream, cry, wreck the house. When we would take her to school, she would go crazy. You know, she would hit the teachers, scream, try to run away. She was running away from reality because on June 16, 2006, her father, Richard Matatia, was critically injured when he was hit by a car. He died two days later on Father's Day. It was devastating, hard. I, I had fear of leaving my mom, and I was just afraid of losing somebody else. Acting out is a common way for kids to cope when uh, trauma or they face trauma in their life. Um, and one big example is the death of a parent. Since my dad was here, I didn't really have guidance. And I always used to look at my dad to tell me what to do, not my mom. After six years on the wrong side of the road, Sose decided it was time to steer her life in a different direction. Thank you. So she went from being completely defiant when getting a consequence to now being able to admit parts where she was wrong and then being able to admit where she was wrong but also take, receive the consequence and not become angry like she did in the very beginning of the school year. I didn't like my image and my reputation. I didn't like the fact that people thought I was stupid because the way I acted. My life is different, like, it's more better. I cruise with people that influence me to do better things and bring out the better in me. With the support of her family and friends, Sose began to dream big. I want to go to college. I want to get my master's degree and I want to become a doctor. It's a reflection of how her attitude has changed. But now, instead of bullying people, she's bullying her dreams. This is Lorraine Char reporting from YNI Intermediate School for Hikino. We're back at Waikia Intermediate School for a special edition of Hikino, dedicated to the Hawaiian value of Ike Pono, to know what is right. Our school administration knew what was right when they came up with the following school philosophy. Waikia Intermediate School is a collaborative, student-centered community in which each individual is encouraged, supported, and academically challenged to reach his or her maximum potential as an active, lifelong learner. Our next story of Ike Pono comes from Seabury Hall Middle School in Makawao, Maui, where students show that sometimes the right thing takes time, patience, and lots of colorful yarn. Seabury Hall students are busy making hats on a loom. The hats program at Seabury Hall has been going on since 2005. Miss Debbie Davis, our middle school math teacher, started the program with the vision of brightening the lives of underprivileged children all around the world. I wanted to find a project that middle school boys and girls could do where they give to other children around the world. What the hats program does is they make hats, as you can see right here, all these different kinds of hats. They learn to do it on a round loom, and um, each, one, each student makes hats. They are, are distributed to children all over the world. Um, it's a project where 
it comes from the heart. They can do it, they complete it with their own hands, and it goes to somebody that will never, they'll never get a thank you, they won't know which child gets it, but they know that they have helped some child somewhere in the world with the hats that they make. Nick Corbett, a Seabury Hall freshman and former member of the hats class, went to Africa for a safari during summer break. During his trip, he visited a school and delivered hats. When we would drive by, there was a little village and they had a, like two schools and they'd always, the kids would always come out and they would yell, sweets, sweets, because they wanted us to give them candy. So we asked our guide um, where we should take the hats to and he told us to go to this school. Seabury Hall graduate Megan O'Malley visited Uganda on a missionary trip. We went with a lady named Carol Adams who used to live here on Maui and she moved there about 17 years ago and opened an orphanage and it's called the Mana Rescue Home. It's for kids infected by HIV or AIDS. Many of the children are also battling malaria. When they are infected by malaria, they get very cold and they get the shakes, so the hats will keep them warmer. We've had former students who have taken them. One student, when she was a uh, in college at Stanford, she delivered a bunch of hats to um, a country in Africa. One year we had a bunch of upper school students from Seabury take hats on their winter to Peru. They rolled them all in their backpack and all the villages they went to, they passed them out. We have delivered hats to uh, Uganda, Rwanda, um, Peru, China, uh, Russia, um, the Philippines, and then all over the United States. We asked students in the hats class how they felt about making the hats. Heartwarming and fun. Well, I feel like I'm helping someone even though I don't like know who it's going to. I still feel like I'm helping out in some way in the world. The vision Miss Davis had has come to fruition as hundreds of children around the world have received the gift of a warm hat. This is Marley Maring for Hiki Now. Our next story of Ike Pono takes us to the Kona side of our island, where students from Kealakehe High School show that when enough people agree on the right thing to do, nothing can stop them. It usually takes months to build a home, but last September, Habitat for Humanity, Let's Build a Volunteers, and the Kona community came together to do something that many consider amazing. This is uh, our Laiopua 2012 Blitz build, and we are going to build five homes in 10 days, from slab all the way up to completion. Habitat for Humanity is a global nonprofit organization whose vision is a world where everyone has a decent place to live. They've built over 500,000 homes worldwide, including almost 300 in Hawaii. My hope is that the, the the community realizes that this is a grassroots organization and that um, together as a community we can improve our our neighborhoods um, and our families um, if we all come together and help each other out. So we're really grateful for the participation from the students from Kalakai High School. Um, on our first day of the bill as our blitz builders from the meeting were arriving to the job site they were in awe of all the students that stood along the sidewalks holding welcoming signs to them, welcoming to Kona and just being thankful that they're here to help these families have their own homes. I was mostly painting, hospitality, you know, making sure everyone didn't, you know, collapse from dehydration and stuff like that. I actually got to meet the, the person whose house was being built, so that was very nice, uplifting. Families were selected from the Hawaiian Homes waitlist and had to meet certain requirements, including contributing 500 work hours towards the project. When you do a partnership with Habitat, you have to volunteer X amount of sweat hours, and that means you need to participate in the building of your home. I don't know how to hammer big beams, but you know what? They took me by the hand, said, hey, I'll show you how to do it. Helping others is pretty much probably one of the biggest goals you can have. It's just been so enjoyable for uh, myself and the entire staff at Habitat just to, to be part of this transformational development, really. We're changing families' lives, so it's really pretty cool. This house is not my house. My son-in-law and my daughter also know 
it's not their house. It's for our grandchildren. And we're just caretakers of this house for them. This is, this is really important that they feel roots and, and belong, you know, at a young age. Not my age, but at a young age. So it's very dear and close to my heart. The no interest mortgage that these families pay go towards building a decent place to live for even more families in the future. This is Luke Founder Spool from Calakea High, Fuhikino. We're back at Waikia Intermediate School in Hilo, Hawaii. We are one of the schools that make up the DOE's Waikia complex. Learning Ike Pono to know what is right comes in stages here in the Waikia complex. Students start off at either Waikia or Waikia Elementary Schools from kindergarten through fifth grade, then move on to Waikia Intermediate from the sixth through eighth grades, and finally to Waikia High School for ninth through twelfth grades. Our next story illustrating the Hawaiian value of Ike Pono comes from Waianae High School in West Oahu, where students show that sometimes doing what is right requires sacrifice and doing less for yourself. What do you want to play with, man? Making others happy is what it's all about for Daisy Agai. <laughs> Her little brothers couldn't agree more. As a sophomore at Waina High School, time is of the essence for Daisy. Did anybody wash clothes yet? From being the mom of the house, cooking, cleaning, and washing everyone's clothes, Daisy has barely any time for herself. My daily routine is that I wake up at 7 and then I feed my brother. And I have to make sure that my brother's ready. Get to school at 8, 8.15. After school, I come home, cook food, and then I stay up all night to do my homework. Although her mother lives at home, a fall that left her barely able to walk forced Daisy to take control of the household duties. It all started when I was 12 because that's when my little brother was born, and that's when my mom fell, like a major fell, and she could hardly walk. Her brother Samson was born with physical complications that makes it hard for him to eat and breathe on his own. With all the responsibilities at home, Daisy finds it hard to change her attitude towards school. My grades are kind of low because of all this. My grades are like D's or C's. It's an all too familiar story at Waina High School and the Leeward Complex. With dropping HSA scores, it led to the DOE that schools here need help. So in May 2010, the state applied and secured the Race to the Top grant. It's a federal initiative for schools or states or, or schools part of, of different states to make improvements. Race to the Top is a $75 million grant that will be split among the Nanakuli Complex, Wainai Complex, and the Ka'u Complex on the Big Island. These schools are receiving this extra support in means of funding extra programs at the school campuses where we are now able to offer uh, tutoring, uh, additional courses for students. For this year, we will be extending the learning time. For Daisy, this means she gets more time to hang around in school in hopes of cleaning up her grades. It's been pretty challenging because trying to balance out how to do your homework, plus cook dinner, make sure that your brothers and sisters go to sleep on time. Yes, it is tough to balance, but she knows that it will be the only way to truly help her family. I'm gonna go to the army. I'm gonna let my family move in with me so I can take care and go to work. The steady balance between home and school will remain uncertain, but if the extra hour does help to improve school data, it'll not only make Daisy happy, but also the rest of the schools in the zone. This is Desilin Teal from Waianae High School reporting for Hikino. Our next story of Ike Pono comes from students at Hawaii Preparatory Academy up in Kamuela. They introduce us to a man who decided to do the right thing and dedicate his life to saving lives. Now he teaches the next generation to do the same. My job title, um, I'm an ocean safety officer for the County of Hawaii at Hawaii Fire Department. Um, in lifeguarding for 23 years, started in 1990 to present. and. Um, I've been here at Apuna Beach since 1996. Black Abraham is now dedicating himself to running the Junior Lifeguard Program on the island of Hawaii, but he traveled a long, hard road before getting to a place where he could give back to the community. I grew up here on a big island on the east side in Hilo, in a homestead land, uh, Keokaha. 
Growing up in Kyoka was something that was really amazing. There was everything that we always needed was the ocean, surfing, swimming, diving, fishing. I was confronted by the director about being a lifeguard because he always saw me down at the beach surfing and you know, he told me, hey, why don't you come and be on lifeguard? You're down here at the beach all the time. At least you can get paid, you know, being a lifeguard, helping people out of the water and stuff. But before Black could excel at saving others, he first had to save himself. I started using drugs when I was the age of 12, marijuana first, and as I got into my high school years, they went to cocaine and um, dealt with all those problems and situation at the age of 30. And age of 36, I just cold turkey and just stopped everything because I felt that my responsibility as a parent and as a uh, ocean safety officer is wasn't tying in. To this day, I've been clean since I was age 36 and I'm 50 now, so um, that was a big change in my life, but that, that's all for the better. We started the Junior Lifeguard program in 1996, 2013. It will be 18 years I've been doing the program. And I, I feel that it's a successful program with a lot of kids coming in and going out and uh, making something of themselves and their lives. What we teach is first aid, CPR, and ocean safety skills. I teach a lot of uh, uh, running, swimming. It's a uh, daily thing. But also what I try to teach is um, teamwork, leadership skills. We do games that, that consist of teamwork where um, everybody is part of it. And educating them as far as ocean safety and awareness and first aid CPR, they have a broad basic fundamentals and foundation on how to provide help when help is needed. As far as the growing of the program, we started off with like 12, 12 kids and every year it started getting bigger and bigger and bigger and um, we had to make it to where we can accommodate more kids. You know, life is filled with accomplishments, but you're not going to accomplish nothing if you're always going to give up and you're always going to quit. Then in life, you're always going to try and take the easy way out. So that's what I try to emphasize with the kids about always finishing what you start. You know, so don't be a quitter because in life, you're going to end up that way and you don't want to be that way. This is Michael Spedich from Hawaii Preparatory Academy for Hiki No. Welcome back to Waikia Intermediate School in beautiful Hilo on Hawaii Island for a special look at the Hawaiian value of Ike Pono, to know what is right. Our next story comes from students at Kamehameha School's Maui High School who show us that when an animal isn't feeling well, the right thing to do involves a lot of tender loving care. Hidden away on a two acre parcel in Haiku, Maui lays the home of Sylvan Schwab and his guests. But they are not your typical guests. They are all orphans or injured animals. East Maui Animal Refuge, this is Sylvan. Can I help you? The East Maui Animal Refuge, more affectionately known as the Boo Boo Zoo, is home to over 50 cats, 50 birds, 25 deer, 16 goats, two horses, two pigs, one cow, and an endless amount of fowl. I can't think of any animal that is on the island that we have not had here at one time or another because we take in anything if it's in a life-threatening situation. Each animal comes to the refuge with a story, some more interesting than others, such as the case of Baby, the blind cow. She was born blind, which is why we took her in. She was already named Baby when she came, um, but um, along with pretty much all of the animals that we have here, they come because they're in some kind of life-threatening situation. Um, this is Gabriel. Gabriel is our oldest goat. And as you can see, he's really scrawny um, because if he was a person, he'd be about 95 years old. And uh, Gabriel came because he was attacked as a little goat by dogs and his neck was torn open and his ear was split. Uh, so Gabriel's been here since he was a little guy. So what motivates a person to turn their home into an animal sanctuary? Well, it turns out that the animals aren't the only ones with a special story. We started out just doing this because when I met my wife, Susie, um, I found out shortly after I met her that she had cancer and that it was not treatable uh, through allopathic medicine on, on the mainland. So she basically came to Maui to die. And part of the, her treatment 
was occupational therapy to have a drive to survive. So when I found out she had cancer, I started collecting sick little critters for her. And that's how the Boo Boo Zoo started. And over 30 years now, it's evolved into this. And Susie has been clear of cancer for almost 30 years now. And now we've saved the life of the animals who in fact helped save her life. Even with Susie being cancer free, the Schwabs continue to share their home and give their love unconditionally to injured and unwanted animals. Recently, Sylvan was denied a renewal of his wildlife rehabilitation permit. Sylvan and the Department of Land and Natural Resources are currently working together to resolve these problems, so the Booba Zoo can and will continue its mission. But we still have this need to care for animals, and we established the Booba Zoo as a no-kill facility. We're going to work it out. One way or another, we have to work it out because we have to do what we do, we have to take care of animals in distress. Sylvan credits the animals for saving Susie's life, but one could say the credit goes both ways. No matter how you look at it, the Boo Boo Zoo is truly a home built with love. From the East Maui Animal Refuge in Haiku Maui, I'm Nikki Davis reporting for Hiki no. We hope you've enjoyed this special edition of Hiki no, dedicated to the Hawaiian value of Ike Pono, to know what is right. All the stories we presented today were conceived, shot, written, and edited by students like us. Which shows that when it comes to producing stories that matter, Hawaii students Hiki no can do. Be sure to tune in next week when Hiki no students explore the Hawaiian value of malama to care for. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.